Consumers United for Evidence-Based Healthcare is a coalition of consumer and health advocacy groups. The main mission and goals is to get consumers involved in healthcare decision making and to have that healthcare decision making based on evidence. Now we have close to 30 organizations, and it's really a dynamic group of organizations that are all interested in helping consumers make the best use of evidence-based medicine. Think about it, if you have 28 organizations and each one reaches, I'm just using this as a number, 20,000 people, that's a tremendous reach out in the world that Q or any individual organization couldn't do on their own. Q does a great job of uh, giving us access uh, to evidence-based information in a variety of ways uh, on their website uh, through connections uh, with people uh, through the Cochrane Library. Many of us who are consumer advocates, we haven't been trained in statistics or science or collecting evidence. And so it's important that we have forums and meetings in which to learn how to be a participant in that process. Healthcare policy in the United States is made through a variety of ways, some of which have a, a very explicit role for consumers. Government advisory bodies often have a seat for a consumer. Congress has written it into its new health care reform legislation that we want consumers to be a part of decision making about health and health care. They need consumers to be part of that, but consumers to fill those roles really have to be trained and educated, and Q is a great place to start that training process. It's really helped us to get involved in panels and committees that are developing expert guidelines on diabetes or medications or interventions and also those that are developing quality measures of health care. We've relied on Consumers United for evidence-based health care to help provide us with consumers in developing our evidence-based guidelines through our National Academy. Doctors will often get enamored with the benefits of treatment and intervening and applying a drug, a medicine, a surgery, the patient will say, well, well, well what about the side effects? You know, doesn't, doesn't that have side effects? The impact of something on a patient missing work, time away from the family, uh, how it affects their daily routine, uh, could also be very important to the consumer but not appreciated by the doctor. What John and I decided to do in the workshop is actually have an interactive exercise where it gave people an opportunity to be part of an actual guideline team and making the types of decisions that they would have to make with that team. And so I'm hoping to take that information back um, to Kaiser in Southern California and figure out how we can incorporate more of the consumer perspective into um, the guidelines and technology assessments we do. As a physician, it's, uh, it's a new world for me. Some things, for example, that I have just assumed are the way it's going to be. These errors happen. People get hospital infections. When I've had to listen to consumers, I realize, no, it doesn't have to be that way. A lot of these errors can be prevented. A lot of these infections can be prevented. So I think participating in guideline panels and quality measure development is really important thing, especially as we see healthcare reform, as we see new delivery models coming out that we really want to make sure they're still consumer based, they're still patient friendly, and they're still evidence based. And we also have annual meetings where the advocates come in, the consumer grassroots advocates, and we learn about evidence and different kinds of evidence, how to find it, how to apply it, and then each of us can take that learning back to our organizations and then it gets further disseminated from there. I like the fact that they brought in doctors who were teaching us don't be afraid of statistics. Here's how you can get a basic grounding in it. Um, you have to know about it to then convey information to the public. We want to actually help shape the research agenda and we want to have enough science and information about how science works to be able to actually engage um, at that level. And we've done that. And so learning about the language of science, some of the logic of science, not being afraid to ask investigators or scientists or their doctors challenging questions. Uh, and sometimes the most challenging questions are the simplest questions. How do you know? How do we know that the benefits are greater than the harms? 
I'd like to speak specifically to the point she made about the importance of the discovery. We have an online course called Understanding Evidence-Based Healthcare, a Foundation for Action, which is a six-hour course online, free and open to all who want to take it. It takes anyone who is interested enough to devote a little bit of time and moves them forward so that they know the basics of how evidence is developed, how evidence is weighed, and how it can be used to support policy decisions. It's impacted me as an advocate, and it's also enabled us to become more sophisticated as far as healthcare science goes, and that allows us to be good representatives on various government and professional committees. You're the one who needs to be able to articulate. I know. We really are a consumer group that is independent of commercial interests or even other public policy interests and other public policy uh, investments. A lot of other organizations have uh, decided that they are going to partner with an industry. Uh, segment with uh, physicians or drug companies or hospitals, well then they're less of a consumer organization. The need for consumer engagement is really high. Q's challenge is how are we going to do that moving forward on limited resources. We're delighted to be a funder of Q and you know we've been very pleased to see this organization grow. Q has achieved a lot and so I think if they continue to do the work that they've done so far and spread that, they will have achieved more than many different organizations have in a very short period of time. Healthcare organizations that involve consumers in their guidelines and technology assessment process really need to um, you know, provide some funding for them to be involved in it. We want to expand our membership, bring more consumer groups in. We need to diversify our membership to make sure it's representative of all consumers that we reach. I would say that we need more grassroots organizations. It doesn't have to be just national organizations. Come join us because you'll have a lot of fun and you'll be treated with respect. This is a time of flux in the healthcare system. In the old days, we were able to make change, but it might take years and it might take some luck. And you know, we couldn't, we didn't have a, a a, a, a clear pathway forward. I think we do have a clear pathway forward right now and that's the surge of people newly eligible for health care that is already sparking a response of how do we as a society ensure that now that we're, we're bringing more people into the system that what they get is good. And so Q has the potential to make an enormous difference in the quality of people's care in the next five years. To really improve the health care system of this country because it's not going to be done just by the scientists or the doctors. It needs a very strong political constituency that says good science matters to good medical care. And these days that is not a given in Washington. And But consumers coming in uh, with that perspective can have uh, enormous clout. When it's done right, when it's done thoughtfully, when advocates take the time to get trained and understand how they can contribute, it is and I truly believe this, the way that we will cure the major diseases of our time.